All right, all right, how you guys doing? So this is Neil, the art instructor at masterpaintout.com, and I'm gonna be doing a uh, time lapse here of a watercolor that uh, you guys saw before in digital format, and uh, it's for my collection. So first thing I do is I make a uh, skin tone, and this is like for under under underpainting. Now I figured this time I'd try something different. I went ahead and used a soft uh, smudge stick with pencil, and un I should have used the uh, 4H lead, it's a lot harder lead um, and, and therefore lighter on the paper. But instead um, I used the 2B because that's all I had at the time. I just now got my 4H in the mail so the next one I'll be doing with 4H, the same technique. But what this allows you to do is it allows you to kind of, if you use the smudge tool right and the lead right, it allows you to put down a really light like layer of just like very smooth gradient um, with no pencil lines and it looks really nice um, and that kind of serves almost as your underpainting. And then you start to darken that up with the actual watercolors. And here I'm just blow drying between because I'm impatient. Anyway, so that's the first layer right there. And I keep I keep adding layers. Um, and there's different ways to use watercolors, different ways I work. But basically, uh, skin tone <clears throat> is typically, that the base skin tone, is typically a yellow ochre and some sort of um, warm red. What I mean by warm red, there's two different kinds of reds. There's one red that when you add water to it, it almost looks like fuchsia. That's a cool red. That's on the uh, cool spectrum. On the opposite side of the spectrum, there's your other red, and that's your warm red. When you add when you add um, water to that, it'll look more orangish. Or another way to look at it, when you mix it with white, it'll look more orange. When you mix the other one with white, it'll look more like fuchsia, more like a hot pink kind of color. Um, anyway, so you, there's different ways you can make you can make flesh tones. Um, now, right right now, I'm actually adding a bunch of the kind of like brighter darker colors to all like where I want all the shadow parts to be on the figure. And anyway, so uh, another way to make flesh tone is, well, first off, the two basic colors you use to make flesh tone is, like I said, a yellow ochre and then a, a warm red. So basically a yellow and a red. That's the base. And then you can add a little bit of water to make it lighter or add less water to make it darker. But another thing you want to do is add white to it. And that's if you want more of a peachy uh, color to it. And that, that gives you a base flesh tone. And then you want to use something like burnt sienna, you know, something like this kind of brown, and that you use to darken it. So you use the brown to darken it, and you use the white to lighten that base skin tone color. That's the basic, the base, the base idea of your skin tones. From there, um, you can add different colors to to it in order to um, add variation to the body. Like you can add a little bit of blue for the parts of like underneath the chin area and things like that. Um, you can add a little bit of um, of the pinker red, that is the cooler red, or even a little bit of purple um, for the parts of like uh, the part where more blood comes through, like the cheeks, the lips, things like that. And then you can even add a little bit of green sometimes um, to that base tone. So basically adding different colors to that base tone also depends what the, the background of your image and things like that, what other lights are affecting your source. But yeah, adding these different colors to, your, to that base skin tone will really help a lot. You can also just buy a, a flesh tone, which I went ahead and bought a few different brands to see which ones I like and if I like them better than just using the, uh, the base um, or making my base myself every time. The problem with making your base yourself every time is it's never going to be the same. It's always going to be a little bit different. Um, and so, yeah, if you're doing like a big piece with a lot of flesh tone and you're trying to lay down that, that base flesh tone and you can't make it the same, you know, you got to make you kind of you gotta, you gotta try to make a big batch, of it, which is why I use the big thing here to make a big batch of it. But if you have a, a brand that you like that has a base flesh tone, um, then yeah. Anyway, so as you see here to that flesh tone, I added some blue, uh, bluish purple, and that gives me this kind of like slightly different shade of skin tone where it looks more cooler shadows. Then I add a little bit more darker, um, not darker, but just a little more purple, so it's a little more warmer now. And uh, so it just changes that flesh tone. That's basically um, how you work with skin and flesh tones. That's how all the pros do it and uh, take some practice. But yeah, um, it, it'll add a lot of variation and richness to your skin tones. If you don't just use the base flesh tone with white and brown, that's going to give you a very kind of just plain, almost cartoonish look. To add that more realistic look, you got to add a bunch of other colors to your base flesh tone. Right, anyway, so um, I use pure colors for the dripping of paint. And if you can't see it, their, their legs are making a swastika. And obviously, there's more legs than they have. <laughs> so if you actually look carefully, you can actually see where the other model's legs are. And you can see that there's two legs. All four legs are actually of the model on the right. The, 
their 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 positions that her legs can can practically be in. Um, and I did it that way because that's the only way to do the swastika, and that's why it's surrealism because you know she has four legs. But uh, anyway, so uh, the the meaning or the meaning of this painting should be pretty pretty easy to pick out. There is more than one meaning, but um, it's called persecuted rainbow. So it's not anti-gay. Just there's no meaning in here that's anti-gay. Just forget that. I want to get that out of the way right now. I don't want people thinking I'm like some a person that's against uh, you know gays or something or being being homosexual because I'm not. I'm actually uh, pro homosexuality. Uh, so anyway, yeah. Um, after after I added these cool rainbow colors and these are all the you know all the colors I use that are dripping. It's like dripping paint, but I kind of wanted to make it look almost like dripping blood as well. And uh, I'll, add the, I'll add the final touches of that later. I actually made that leg a little too dark. I added a little bit um, too much to it. And I could have tried to lift it off right when I did it. But I was like, oh, well. I, mean, I wanted that, that that leg to almost like fade into the background. Like not to be really visible too much. Because I wanted the swastika to be more visible. But I still I think I, went, I took a little too far. And um, that's all right, you know. I, I might end up painting it again anyway. But anyway, so the... Uh, the meaning you should be able to figure out by the title and then just by the content of what the what the painting is, right? Anyway, so all these uh, I wanted to use all the rainbow colors, like the um, gay pride rainbow colors, and so I used all those colors, and that's what you see dripping off of her legs. You know, so basically to make the to try to make the swastika more pronounced, just in case people miss it, but also to show um, other meaning. Notice here I'm adding a little bit more red into my skin tones now. And adding that in. Now, I kind of wanted the um, line on her other side over there. If I didn't want that line, then within the first five to right there, where I'm adding water there to kind of blend it out a little bit. I want a little bit of a hard line and a soft line. And so that all determines on how long you wait before you add water. Um, and so if you guys want, I can do a watercolor tutorial on how to use watercolors and how to do different ways to blend them, how to get soft lines. Um, how to get hard lines, things like that. Um, the way I work with watercolors, it makes it very easy. Um, wet on wet can be very difficult, um, but the way that I work with it, um, wet on dry, and anyway, it's just really cool techniques that I have that work really good. And they give you the same kind of blended technique you can do with wet on wet. And basically how I do that, is what you just saw there with her with her butt there, is I, you add, you're doing, you're doing uh, sorry, wet on dry, so you add the water on there, uh, not water, excuse me, the paint on there. So kind of, kind of, sort of, sort of uh, whatever, you know, how much water you have in the paint all depends on what, how dark you want the color. You add that down where you want it. And then you go ahead and, and clean your paintbrush out in the water and then dab it on your, on your, on your cloth or sponge like two times, whatever. So it brings it from like a water, like if you totally soak your brush, it's like, that's like a number 10. And if you just kind of swipe it against your thing twice, like both ways, then it brings it down to like a number five wetness. You take that now with just the water and or, or another color if you want to blend it to another color. And then you just kind of you know hit the edge with that water a little bit and just kind of blend it out into where you want it to blend into. And then if that doesn't do it enough, you can kind of pick some of that up with a paper towel or something. Or even with the brush, just dry your brush and pick up some of the water with your brush. And then clean your brush off again because it picked up a little bit of, a little bit of uh, paint. And then, and then just kind of um, you know dab it on your sponge and or paper towel, whatever you're using. A couple times to get some of the water off so it's not too wet and then and then blend again and just kind of scrub a little bit and blend back into where you want it to go into so in this case the model on the left the one that's holding the other model's leg with their right hand and then uh how i just blended that buttock out and uh so yeah that's how you get that nice smooth gradient and so you can get that same kind of smoothness as you do with wet on wet but without having to struggle with the wet on wet because it can be kind of difficult this makes makes it much easier and you get the same result um, now I added a couple of different colors. I added like a warm orange um, going toward like the reddish orange. And then I added some red but watered down so it's kind of more pinkish. And then I added red to where it's more um, less diluted with water so it looks more more vibrant in red because I want it to look like blood. And this is making the um, circle that goes around the uh, swastika. Because remember there's uh, usually I think the swastika on the Nazi sign is black. And then I think it's on a red flag or something like that. Um, I'm not really sure. I, I, but I know, I know it's like red and black. But anyway, so I wanted to just show the, the idea that there's a red circle going around the swastika. But I wanted it to be cool and abstract. So I, I decided to go with blood to, 
to really give the painting more of the meaning that I want it to have, the, the, the idea of, of, of being prosecuted or persecuted. In this case, persecuted, not prosecuted. Um, yeah, so, and now I'm going ahead, I'm using a, uh, I forget what these pins are called. I think this is the Uniball brand. And I can't remember, I think it comes from Japan, I'm not sure. Basically, it's almost like uh, like white out inside of a pin or something. And it works really good to cover up on watercolors. So I really like this for if I want some, you know, spe speckler highlights, like things like blood or things like these, these paint drippings and things like that. Sometimes adding little speckler highlights in the hair. Um, different things like that it works really good for and uh, I cannot you can also use um, I had this uh, I figure what it's called I'll, I'll show you when I do a painting with it but it's something white in it I forget, what, I forget what it's called right now but it's basically used more for comic artist but it works great on a brush and um, you can uh, you know use it and, and white out certain areas and then you can go back and paint over that because actually it leaves a texture kind of you can paint over rather than using like acrylic which doesn't work so good um, but yeah, so anyway, I'll show that. But as you see, that little highlights in the blood really make the blood pop. And this is the actual final picture now. Um, I need to take a better picture of it. But yeah, if you guys want a copy of this, I'll, I'll have a link in the description to my DeviantArt account and to the Deviant um, art version of this. So that way you can go and uh, download and pay. You can either download it and, and print it out yourself or you can uh, pay them to print it out on, on Canvas for you or, or just a photo print or whatever kind of print you want. Um, yeah, so I just figured I'd start offering that for my actual um, artwork um, because I usually don't offer that. I It's very rare I sell my originals. Um, and if I do, they're, they're quite expensive. But All right, guys, thanks for watching. Again, check out my links in the description, masterpaintingnow.com. A lot of free tutorials, a lot of awesome courses right now on sale. I have over um, 30,000 happy paying students right now on Udemy. So um, I'm obviously doing something right. People like my teaching style. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Thanks.